What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are working on my buddy's C6 again. This is the one that I Kenzo coated a while ago. You guys saw me put the Morimoto headlights in it. Since then, he has also done the Morimoto tail lights. They look really nice. And I'm trying to talk him into doing the Morimoto fog lights and the markers too. I think he's gonna go ahead and do them. But today we're doing an MGW short throw shifter. Here is what you get in the package. This all comes in one box. Here's another, and then these are loose in the box. So he went with the anodized blue flat stick. I think it was a good choice. It, it's pretty close to the color of the car, so it's gonna look really nice in the car. I'm gonna go ahead and go step by step. I have my girlfriend Allie here today to help me out. She's gonna help do some filming, so I'm gonna go step by step, show you guys exactly how to do it. Um, I know there are some other videos out there. Uh, MGW actually has a really good video too, but I figured why not get some content. So, let's go. All right guys, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is we're gonna remove the factory shifter. So you wanna slide down the shift boot. There's gonna be a, a torque right here, it's a T25. Go ahead and take that out, and then the shifter's gonna pop right off. Just a little note, the 2008 and up C6s are gonna have a chrome ring around here. These do not, this is a 2007, so 2005, six, and seven are not gonna have it. They're gonna be identical to this. All right, next step, now that you have the shift knob off, you're gonna remove the center console lid, lift that up. There's gonna be one, two, three, four T15 torques. Go ahead and take those out and the whole lid will come off. And now that you got the center console lid off, you're gonna go ahead and we're actually gonna take the whole center console out. So on the, uh, the first gen C6s like this, you are gonna have this little like uh, tombstone shaped panel that comes out. Go under it, I already popped it out, but you're just gonna pop it up, slide it out. There's just two little tabs. And then you have, you're either gonna have seven millimeters or more T15 torques. So you're gonna take those out that there for now then you're going to go ahead and grab the emergency brake boot and you're going to pop that up again i already did it but it's just a bunch of little tabs and let's see if you can see it right there and right there you're either going to have two more t15s or two more seven millimeters he has seven millimeters in this i'm going to go ahead and take those out and then we'll show you the next step all right guys i came around the other side of the car now that you have these two sevens out you're going to pop this whole panel out there's two snap clips up there so you're just going to grab it give it a good yank work it out and there you go now that you got that side panel out, over on the passenger side, we're actually gonna snap everything loose. I went ahead and just did it, but gently work your way around. Start from down here, both sides, there's just snap clips that run up and around. So you're just gonna wanna gently snap them out, work your way up, go up and around, do the other side, start from here, work them out, and you'll see the whole center console is loose. Now there's gonna be a couple plugs on it. The hazard plug back here, the cigarette lighter plug, the heated seat plugs, we're gonna have to just disconnect those. The ones down here for traction control and everything, we're gonna be able to, we're going to, be able to uh, keep plugged in. We're just gonna swing it over out of the way. So next, I'm gonna get this moved, I'll get it unplugged, and I'll show you guys then. All right guys, little tip from neutral. Just drop it down, it'll be a little easier to slide it back. You're gonna slide this back, and then you're going to want to disconnect all the harnesses, you're gonna have to feel around for them. There's one. And I'm just gonna go ahead and walk around to the other side of the car and I'll pop this one out and then we'll show you guys the next step. All right guys, so I came around to the other side just cause I couldn't see the one for the uh, cigarette lighter plug back there. Just disconnected it so now everything's loose. We're just gonna take this and swing it up and over the shifter and swing it over to the side so it's out of the way. All right guys, the next step, we're actually gonna remove the upper shifter. So once you have the console off, go ahead and remove this mat. that out of the way. Now you're gonna go ahead and remove these four 10 millimeter nuts. All right, once those four are off, 
you're gonna be able to, and actually crucial, don't forget, put it back in neutral. Has to be in neutral. Now you're gonna be able to remove this. It might be kinda adhered down, just pop it loose. Take that off. Now you're gonna go ahead and remove four 10 millimeter bolts that hold the upper shifter plate in. Crack them loose. They're gonna be a little bit tighter. So I'll get these four off. You don't have to watch me do it. And I'll show you guys the next step. All right guys, now that you have the bolts out for the upper shifter mount, go ahead, pop that loose and take it out. So next thing we're gonna do is take these torques out and actually somebody, it looks like somebody was, actually no, this is the factory bolt. So we're gonna take this bolt out and these torques. I'll show you guys that now. All right guys, so I was right. Actually, they should all be T40 torques. So somebody was definitely in here and replaced this one for some reason. Um, I also noticed a couple other little things were missing. So I don't know who, I don't know when, but somebody else was in here. So go ahead, remove these three. In your car, they should be T40 torques. Then you can slide out the, there you go. You can slide out the lower assembly. Now I'm just gonna clean up the torque tube a little bit. Uh, take that. That is the top of the torque tube. Just give that a good rub down with like rubbing alcohol, get it clean, and because you are gonna put a little bit of like boom mat on there, uh, like insulator. And then we're gonna go ahead and start building the new uh, lower assembly. All right, so now you're gonna go ahead and take the factory linkage rod out. It's just two screws right here. Pop those out, pull it out, and then go ahead. And if yours comes assembled like this, just go ahead and take these out, disassemble it, and I'll show you guys what to do after that. All right, guys, just clean up your factory linkage rod, take a towel, clean it up a little bit. Now that this is disassembled, slide those on. With, when you're facing this, with the ears away from you, put this so the longer end of the linkage rod is to the left. Just like that. All right, guys, now that you have that in place, you're just gonna go ahead and reassemble this. Put this back on. Make sure this is facing up while you do it. Actually, it will, it won't, one way it'll spin all the way around, the other way it won't, so easiest, just make sure that's up. Put everything back in, start them by hand so they don't, you don't strip anything. And then go ahead and use the supplied tool to tighten everything down. All right, so since you guys already cleaned your torque tube, like I said, now we're gonna go ahead and cut up this dynamat. Get four inches first. So we're gonna cut four inches off of it. Like that. And then you're gonna cut what's remaining directly in half. All right, guys, so now you're gonna take that dynamat, the one you cut into four inches, you're going to put right between here. It is super, super sticky. Get that installed right in there like that. It's calling me. Then you can take your other ones. And in their video, it's kind of hard to tell, but you're just putting these, the next one you're going to put up here like so. And the last one that you cut is going to go below the four inch piece. Unless you can get it down in there. So it should look something like that when you're done. All right, guys, now you're going to take the uh, foam heat pad that they gave you. We're gonna install that in here. So in their video, they did it 
uh, the other way, but I find it easier to do it like this. So you're gonna take this, and this lines up perfect for in here. Get it as close to the two notches as possible. Just like that. That all to lay flush. Just move your linkage out of the way so you can lay that. That one goes like this. The next one, you're gonna go ahead and put under that. I'm not, I won't film that, it's hard for you to see. Don't let them overlap, so just bring this right up to where this one meets. It's kind of like where this welded area is on it, where you put the dynamat over. And then I'll have Allie go around to the other side and I'll show you where the third one goes. All right guys, so the last one, it's gonna go on the driver's side of the tunnel. Slide it in just like this. And you're gonna put it right there. Now, it looks like somebody was in here and a lot of these, a lot of this like piping work is not run the right way. It looks like it's twisted. So this is hanging off the wall a lot. Should yours will be against this if nobody's been in here messing with it. I'm gonna go ahead and put it behind this. Um, normally you put it over it, but there's no way this is gonna fit like that. So this one's gonna go just like that. All right, guys, before we install the lower box, you're just gonna put a little bit of blue Loctite on the three uh, torques that we took out, the T40s. Just put a dot on. You take your finger, run it around it if you want. You don't have to go crazy. These are just important. Do something like that. Put them at the bottom of the threads so that it pushes up the bolt as you screw it in. You're gonna do that on each one. All right, guys, now we're gonna install the new lower assembly. Put that in. You're gonna have to kind of wiggle it around to make sure there's enough room for the linkage. So I'll go ahead and get this. It's not really enough room to do this and film at the same time. So I'll go ahead and get this in. Before I put all the bolts in, I'll show you what to do. All right, guys, so we did hit a little snag. I was afraid of this when I first saw this, but all this piping work that I was talking about, how this is supposed to be in, you can see how, I don't know if you can tell, they're actually crossed over down there. So somebody was into this, uh, the torque tube tunnel, and was messing with this. I don't know what they were doing, but now they ran backwards. The, low, the new lower assembly actually hits this, and it can't push over far enough, so I can't get the lower assembly in. Um, I'm going to see what I can do, try to make this fit right, and I will come back to you when I have a solution for it. All right, guys, it's been about an hour, but we did end up getting those lines out of the way. Uh, they are the trans cooler lines. I did wait for my dad to get here because he's done so many of these. I wasn't sure what we could bend and what what could be bent safely. So he ended up bending those out of the way for me. Everything's still the way it's supposed to be. Now the lower box fits in. You got the linkage connected. I didn't put any of the bolts in yet. So you're going to go ahead, put the bolts in just hand tight for now. And I'll show you what we're going to do next. All right, guys, now you're going to go ahead and use the alignment tool that they gave you. It's the little plate. So you're going to put that in. Put the two bolts in. Put those in there. Go ahead, tighten those up. That's just to keep everything in place while you tighten up the rod bolt, the linkage rod bolt, and the two torque tube bolts. So first, let me grab my tool. Yep. So the first one you're gonna wanna tighten is the linkage rod bolt. So go ahead and tighten that one first. Okay. Now, T40 right there. Now go ahead and tighten up your two, well, the other two T40s on the torque tube. Okay. Just make sure everything's good and tight. All right. All right, now that you have the three torques tightened, go ahead and remove the alignment tool. So you're gonna take those bolts back out. And 
There you go. All right, guys, so what you're gonna wanna do is while this is out, the upper shifter, the upper box on the shifter, you're gonna go ahead and put in a piece of the hardware. You're gonna do it on all of them, but I'll show you on one. Put the hardware in, tighten the lock screw until it locks, and then you're just gonna back it off so it's just loosened. This way, it's once in the car, it's easier to do it. Go ahead and do that on all of these, then we'll go ahead and install the upper box. All right, guys, so next thing you're gonna do is put the supplied gasket in, then, Allie, hold that for me. I'm just gonna take some of the extra grease in there. So I just took some of the extra, so I just took some of the extra grease in the bag and just wiped it in there. Now you're gonna take your shifter and drop it down into place and go ahead and tighten up all these torques with the supplied tool they gave you. Once you're done with that, I'll show you the next step. All right guys, so once you go ahead and tighten the four torques, you're gonna now go ahead and tighten up the set screws that you turned out a quarter turn before. So go ahead and just turn another quarter turn, tighten it up. So tighten up all those four, and then we'll move on to the next step. All right guys, next thing we're gonna do is reinstall the factory dust boot, but you actually have to go ahead and modify yours. So you're gonna take a razor, and you're gonna cut right on this seam right here, so you're gonna cut the bottom part off. All right guys, so when you're done cutting it, you'll have this piece cut off, and it should look like that. You just wanna cut it to that first line. Now if you notice on his, it does have a slight tear in it. All the ones we have done so far, the dust boots are torn. You can either go ahead and order a new one or reuse yours. We haven't had any problems yet with torn ones. So now we're gonna go ahead back in the car and reinstall this. All right guys, so go ahead. You see, we have to cut it so it kinda of sits flush, and now it sits like one whole boot. So go ahead, reinstall the four 10 millimeter nuts, and get your dust boot back tightened down. All right guys, so reusing this top mat is optional. If you do plan on using it though, you're gonna have to modify it and cut the center out like I just did, and then you will be able to use it with your MGW. And it will sit just like that. All right guys, so this next step, I'm actually not gonna show you on camera just cause it's, it's a simple step. We're actually gonna go ahead and start putting everything back together. We're, so we're gonna put back together this on our console. So you're just gonna have to feed everything back through. It's easier if you drop it out of neutral into fourth. So do that and then make sure you just reconnect all your harnesses and snap everything back in. All right guys. All right guys, now that you got the center console snapped back in, go ahead and reinstall your two sevens or torques here. You can snap this back into place. Then you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna snap that this back into place. Allie's gonna come hold this for me. And now that that's snapped back into place, go ahead and put your two sevens or torques back in here. And then now that those are back into place, you can go ahead and snap your shift boot back into place. And just put that back down. Make sure everything is lined up. And just snap it back down into place. And then go ahead to the other side and we will reinstall our center console lid. All right guys, now that these torques are back in, close that up. Last thing to do is put the shift ball on. All right guys, so he went with the flat stick and a white shift ball instead of reusing the factory one. So they say you have to be very careful putting this on. They want you to screw it on all the way, just loosely until it stops. Turn it out one full turn, so that would be there, and then stop here. So now what you're gonna do is use the supplied tool, tighten up that lock nut on the bottom, turn it, and that's how you do it. If you over tighten this and try to make it flat, you're gonna crack the ball. So now just tighten it with the supplied tool and you're done. And just so you guys can see, this is a supplied tool. So you're just gonna put it in, turn it till it tightens, don't go crazy. There you go. So also, it won't go into reverse without the car running because it won't activate the solenoid. So, and then just make sure everything's good. But I think everybody that does this is gonna love it. It's super notchy. 
definitely helps out. I've done these for so far, absolutely love them. This is the second flat stick, but we've done, I, I, don't, I can't even count how many MGWs we put in so far. So that is the install on this car. It's done. I am actually gonna go ahead and I'll show you guys just real quick at the end. I'm gonna put his roof back on. He's got two cracks in it, so I'm just gonna run a little couple pieces of carbon on it. And then this car is done and it is ready to go home today. All right, I wanna show you guys what I was gonna do last. You can see his roof is actually cracked right where the pins are on both sides. This is a new roof. He's only had it for uh, about 10 months now. The skin actually blew off the first one. So the frame stayed on the car, but he was going down Route 80 and the skin blew clean off. So we ordered a new one. These are not cheap and both sides cracked just like that. So he's actually getting water in the car now. So I'm going to go ahead and you guys can see there's already carbon vinyl on this. I'm just going to run carbon up. All right, guys, I am done working on the C6 for the day. It's ready to go home. See, short throw is done. And the battery died as I was explaining to you what I'm doing, but I ended up just running some carbon on the edges here because he's got a clear roof. Uh, I don't know where it died before, so I'll just say it again. Last summer, he had the skin of the, one of these roofs fly off while he was going down to 80. The frame stayed attached, that literally just like it adhered from it. And then he got a new one. These are not cheap. He's had it about 10 months and you can actually see where it's cracked under the vinyl. So there's a crack right there and on the other side in the exact same spot. So I just ran vinyl over it so no more water can get in the car until you can get it figured out. So that's it for this for today. I'm gonna go ahead and just wipe it down for him and then I'm gonna I'll deliver it to his house for him. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one.